So hi everyone. Um, I'm going to present uh, some new technologies uh, you know, that Elasticsearch uh, to facilitate data mining of the human microbiome uh, databases. Um, I'm Michael Leclerc, I'm working uh, currently uh, in the Arnaud Droit Laboratory at uh, the Centre Hospitalier de l'Université Laval. And um, before just, in, just getting you the, the course content, before entering the core of the subject, I'm going to talk about just big data in the biology world, uh, where biology applies. And uh, to stick with the subject of the summer school, uh, I'll show what resource we have to, uh, for the microbiome uh, and those related to it. And I think finally, I'm going to present the, the, some solution to, to mine the, bio, the, the microbiome data, including Elasticsearch. Uh, everyone hear me correctly? Or do any... Okay, good. So, big data in the biology world. Uh, just big data itself. Uh, in, uh, a few years ago, Eric Smith from Google told, uh, told us that the, at the, from the dawn of civilization until 2003, human can generate five exabytes of data. Uh, and now we produce that kind of data every two days. It wasn't perfectly accurate because one year, one year after that, uh, a guy from a company really checked the, the, did a study about that and exactly 23 exabytes of information was recorded uh, and replicated just in 2002. So now we record and transfer much information every seven day, which was almost accurate, but not exact. Eric Schmidt works in uh, social networks, internet technologies. We have a lot of things, uh, a lot of data coming from that. But now in science, we have the physics, which uh, contribute a lot in the big data information uh, with experience with a large hadron collisioner, for example. In biology, I'm going to talk about that. And uh, the next uh, will be the Internet of Things, Internet of Objects. We're going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of, of, of data coming from that. Uh, so that's going to be the future. And probably in the Internet of Things, we're going to have some biology stuff, uh, taking record of your sample, uh, blood sample, or whatever. What is big data? Uh, it's uh, defined by the four Vs. Uh, the first one is the volume, where we are talking in uh, exabytes now. Um, the second one is variety, so it's coming from videos, internet, uh, science, uh, whatever you want. Uh, another, another V is the veracity. Uh, veracity, uncertainty of data, it's a major uh, issue for uh, big data technologies. Um, in biology, you can't always trust what you have in your samples or what's coming from your uh, sequencing uh, technologies. So this is, this is a, a huge problem. Uh, to, you need to clean before getting uh, too, too far in new analysis. And the last one is the, vel as ve the velocity. Uh, velocity, so you have the same kind of data just coming again and again in different time timelines. Um, so what's generating so much data in biology? You already know. Uh, it's uh, the sequencing uh, technologies. The cost per genome decreased a lot uh, after 2008. Um, and at uh, 20 years ago, uh, it was uh, it costed billions of dollars to, to just uh, sequencing the first free living bacterium, and years of data analysis. And now, for 200 dollars, you can have your personal genome uh, mapped uh, in a few days uh, with the 23andMe, uh, which is a sub, sub company of Google, almost. But at a certain point, now. The next generation sequencing grows outspacing uh, the computational resource. That's the issue today. Um, and uh, you have three, three data here. Oops. The, the first one is the, the hard disk uh, storage, so in megabytes per dollar. Uh, it's doubling every 14 months. Before NGS, we, we have the base pair per dollar just doubling every 19 months. So it was OK to store it. It was cheaper and cheaper to store the data. But now, in the next generation sequencing, uh, the number of, of dollars you need to sequence your base pair is, is, uh, is less fewer. So now we have space issues. We need the terabytes, petabytes of data to store all your uh, sequencing information. And maybe at a certain point, it will become may probably cheap, cheaper to resequence uh, instead of storing sequencing data. Um, what's the effect? Uh, of the local sequencing or research. Uh, before pre, uh, before next, generation, next generation sequencing, 
uh, you spend a lot of time to sequence uh, and uh, a lot of money to do it. And this is only the part of analysis here. Uh, this is only the storage and for the sample collection experimental, experimental design. Oh, this mouse is very sensitive, sorry. And uh, now, well, now you just be beyond the two, uh, two boxes here. Gosh. Uh, now the sequencing is very fast, cheap, and it takes a long time to do the sample collection because you can retrieve thousands of people, thousands of collections of samples. And then now the downstream analysis take a lot of time and money. So now these are the challenges of the big data. Uh, how efficiently store everything, what kind of volume, what kind of structure, how we can link together, um, how quickly we can explore and search uh, with all this data. Do we split uh, our, our samples? Uh, can, what kind of algorithm we can use to do that? What kind of request? What kind of software we can use? And uh, architect architecture to, to have to, to, um, to store that and analyze everything. Um, before answering all this question and propose you uh, uh, some side on Elasticsearch, uh, I'm going to just explore what we have in the mic mic micro data. Uh, you already know that uh, the meta genomics or so micro data is coming from uh, DNA exploration, DNA extraction, and uh, sequencing. Uh, you have your reads, your sequencing. Do I have a laser somewhere? No. Okay, not so. Um, and um, once you do your assembly and you search against the database, you answer, want to answer two questions. Who is there in your samples and uh, what they can do? So the, the phylogenic classification is very important. You want to know uh, what kind of population you have in your sample. And, uh, What's the pathways? What the genes? What the genetic involved uh, in uh, in the, the 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 sample you have uh, in your end? Um, someone in a few years ago mapped the diversity of your, the human microbiome. Oh, thank you. Marsh. Uh, you better get. Well, it's okay because it's it's very sensitive and it's too. Marsh, let's see. my battery keep here. Ah, I need to. There's a backup. Oh, okay. Too bad. Yesterday there was some. No, but it's not worse. It's not worse. I'll take the survey. Okay, so this is the diversity of the human microbiome. Just a phylogenetic tree showing all the various subpopulation uh, we know today. Uh, you have also their um, abundant the presence in various tissues, uh, such as the steel, the plaque, the tongue, uh, skin, every, uh, everything else, and their abundance in each, uh, in each tissue. Um, someone tried to attempt to map uh, of the diversity of the microbial genome and identify the number of species for every gender. Uh, this is a, a clustering of a, of a species specific uh, genome. And that showed the complexity of the, the microbiome, of your bio, uh, microbiome analysis and the diversity of various uh, collection of samples. Um, so missing something here. Okay. What do we have in a uh, microbiome resource? Um, the data, the main database is known as the Human Microbiome Project. Okay. Um, the objective of this database is to provide you to characterize all the microbial, microbial communities in a, a, a many um, in multiple body sites, human body sites, and it took the correlation between the change in the microbiome and the human health. Uh, it just aim, in fact, to, to help if it can determine determine if there are set of microbiomes uh, common to each human. Uh, if change in the microbiome can uh, result in different states in your health of, uh, or an advance in the disease, uh, develop in the same time, develop all new technologies for treating the complex microbial system within the natural environment. And uh, maybe another idea, idea is to begin the, to deal um, with the legal, ethical, uh, and social complications that may arise from the microbiome, uh, the former human microbiome. Uh, what's really useful in that database is the, is the, the reference genome, 
Um, right, I think you can see. So you have all reference genomes. If you want to map uh, your sample, to, uh, this is a very good um, uh, resource. You have a lot of chat gen sequence and 17x uh, sequence. These are all samples from various study. So you have all the clinic, clinical data from various patients and all the genetic uh, of the, the, the sequencing or experiment from this patient. So you can do the exercise to extract all the information from those and map it to reference genome to extrapolate the population of each sample. Um, you have other data such as functional databases, metabolic reconstruction, uh, some RNA seq too. So very uh, very useful database. Um, the second one is the MG REST. Uh, this is an automated platform to uh, analyze the metagenome. So it quantifies all your um, microbial population uh, based on the sequence data. Uh, it performs also quality control, uh, automated annotation, comparative analysis, uh, and it's compatible with a lot of uh, metagenomic uh, data. This is uh, what uh, this tool provides you. So you just give, uh, you give uh, the samples where they're coming from, and it takes care of uh, checking the quality control and um, to map against the, the database of uh, full genome. And it tries to quantify the population of each uh, bacteria may be present, that may be present in all of your samples. Uh, this is just a sample test uh, from the website. You can try. It's very easy. Uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you have various ways to, to, um, to represent your data. It's a very cool tool. Uh, this is Cheetah. It's uh, almost the same of MG REST. Uh, same thing. You have a micro study management platform. You can keep, tra keep track of multiple omics uh, experiment data. <laughs> Upload and analyze uh, your oral data and generate some visualization. It's less advanced than uh, MG REST, but uh, still, uh, I think it's, uh, it's older. Um, you also have the Earth Microbiome Project, which aims to characterize uh, the global microbial, microbial taxonomy and uh, diversity, uh, functional diversity all over the planet in all uh, human uh, populations. Uh, it provides the gene atlas, um, assembled genomes again, visualization portal, and metabolic reconstruction. Uh, this is a uh, this is uh, this, the, the map of um, okay. This is, this is an interactive uh, world map showing all the position of each um, Earth microbiome sample on Earth, and it's connected uh, to its most similar sam other sample within the database. So you can extrapolate what kind of bacteria, what kind of microbiome are similar within population uh, in humans uh, on the planet. So you have your you, uh, um, no, you have all your sequence uh, and your population in your samples uh, once you have you've done your, your, all your analysis. And now you need to dig further and answer uh, various questions such as uh, what uh, the, this population means for, for the body. Uh, is it linked to a disease you are studying? Um, what are the impact on the health of the patient? What kind of product also my bacteria population uh, can create and deliver to the body extra. Uh, and in summary, what's, what's genetic of the microbiome tells you that's that. that that's, what, that's what you want to transfer. So for that, you need to go to all bioinformatics other related resources. The first one is, of course, PubMed. Contains more than 26 million documents. You all know, know that database. All biomedical literature, life science journal, books. And you have the links for the full text content uh, of published websites. So you have a very simple search, very ba very basic, efficient though. Uh, but um, it's uh, it's not the perfect search engine for for the literature. Uh, personally, I prefer Google Scholar because you have the full text content. It's very very uh, useful, and you have to publish all the database. Um, those guys did a manual, well, a manual, text mining, anyway, almost manual uh, curation of the literature. So by text mining technologies, uh, they uh, have a, did a lot of work to annotate all biological, and that, and, um, biological entities and, uh, and their relationships. So for example, if you look for a gene, 
it already took, did the work of passing all full text documents uh, to extract, uh, to, to associate a permanent number with the gene. You, have, uh, you can filter by bioconcept, chemical, disease, gene, whatever you want, uh, and it should give all the paper to, uh, to research. Um, now, if you have a bacteria, so it means metabolites. The human metabolism database uh, is um, easier to study the, all the metabolites and the small molecules uh, that the body and the gut bacteria will uh, produce. So you have all the information for each small molecule uh, metabolite found, found in the human body. Uh, it also includes the bacteria products and the human products, so you can do the relation between both. It has a simple um, um, search engine, so you can bruise by metabolites, disease pathway, whatever you need, depending on the genetics uh, of your subpopulation you are analyzing. Um, and you can search by uh, chemical uh, mo molecular weight uh, terms um, or every text query. So that's uh, very wide you can, um, and it's very fast. Of course, you have keg pathways. You have all the high-level information uh, function and utilities for, for the biological systems uh, for, for at various levels. So cell organisms, so if you have your bacteria, you just put in it and uh, it will tell you all the pathways uh, known in the bacteria. Uh, you can also find by ecosystem, so depending on the gut uh, or skin. And you can search by many, um, by many types, uh, depending pathway, functional autologs, gene molecules, biochemical reaction. Uh, they also have some um, search engine for drugs that can be related to a uh, gene you are studying, uh, or even by topic pathogen, plants, so, and even bacteria, if you want by organism. Uh, it's, um, it's not super user-friendly, but it's efficient. You just have, a, a you just have a, to, to enter a text, and it uh, will provide you all the pathways. Uh, so that's uh, the search by pathway, or you can do it by ontology, by virus, uh, whatever you have. Um, that's uh, SMPDB, the Small Molecule Pathway Database. It's kind of related with KEG, uh, but it has more, um, uh, it's really emphasizing on the Small Molecule Pathway found in human. It's designed to support uh, the pathway elucidation and discovery in uh, metabolic, transcriptomic. So you have all drug actions, disease, and uh, it's a little bit uh, more uh, new that, uh, than uh, KEG. Uh, and you have uh, all the pathways again, but you can search by uh, drug action, which is very cool if you need to, 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 to target uh, your bacteria population. And talking about drug, you have drug bank. So supposing you are looking for a way to recover from dysregulation, for example, of your microbiome flora, uh, homeostasis in the gut, uh, you will find here all the drug that could eventually target uh, specific bacteria products or even pathways, uh, and them, so you want to, to, to target their metabolism. So drug bank has, uh, I don't remember, but 2,000 uh, interaction between drugs and their target. And you can search uh, by drug or the pathways or genes and provide you all the drugs and effects and secondary effects for each of them. Another cool DB is the food DB. So you have the database of all food consistent, uh, chemistry, biology. So depending on the, 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 if you want to study the, the impact, for example, on the gut microbiome, so depending on the room, diet of the patient. On the food DB, for each component, you have all these, uh, for, so this is just a, a sample list of the compound you can find in that. Physiological effect, presumptive, uh, well, presumptive health effects, uh, or for sure color, taste, or whatever you want. And you can probably uh, associate what the diet of a patient with the, 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 the microbiome uh, the gut microbiome with that. So very simple browsing uh, st um, uh, window. Um, well, you have uh, all the all the known food uh, for humans. 
Then you have also toxin, uh, toxin DB. <laughs> this is great to estimate the impact of bacteria toxic byproducts on the health of the patient. So it combines all detailed information on toxin data and their targets. You have all the bacteria, found food and, fung and fungus toxin, uh, which, are, um, uh, which contain the database. And you have almost uh, 90 fields, uh, including all the chemical properties, toxicity values, molecular interaction, medical information. Um, this DB uh, may be very useful to, to estimate the toxicity of, uh, of a dysregulation of a population, of a bacteria population in the skin or, or in the gut. Uh, this very simple uh, browsing again, you can filter by, uh, by fungal toxins or bacterial toxins. And uh, you have, well, depending on your knowledge in chemistry, <coughs> maybe useful. Then uh, for the more um, pure chemical database, you have Campbell, you have Kibi. Uh, this is a dictionary of molecular entities. This is uh, at the atomic level. Um, so maybe not for biologists, more to, to, chemist, to chemical guys. And of course, Uniprot uh, for the protein sequence and uh, functionality, uh, depending on what uh, all your uh, microbiome samples are secreting. So now that you have all these great resources, uh, how to mine them, how to dig, to put in a relation, uh, that's, that's the challenge for biologists. Uh, many, you have so many databases, and what I show you is just a sample. Uh, I didn't do all the literature, but probably it's just 5% uh, of what's existing on, uh, in the biology. Um, so you have many databases, many web services. Some of them can exploit your data, which is nice. Uh, but you need to jump to website to another to analyze uh, the data if you don't know any programming thing. You need to use external tools also to create the relation. Uh, for a biologist, you can do it manually for each database using online tools, and you can you, you end with a browser with uh, 20 tabs after at the end of your analysis. Uh, and if you know a bioinformatician, then you go to, to programming. You download the full set of each database, you connect them, you manipulate the data with air package conductor. Uh, the conductor con contains a, a lot of package, and probably if you have a database in your mind, you probably have a tool to extract information from that. Uh, and you have, a, if you are a pure programmer, so Java, Python, Perl, you have a lot of uh, uh, library to exploit um, biological data. Or you can go to Elasticsearch. I think that's the future. Uh, that's Elasticsearch is in the middle of uh, the big data tools uh, that are created in the last years. Uh, this is not the only solution. There are others. But what's, what's nice with that is uh, it's an open source search server, so it can index any kind of heterogeneous data, which is perfect exactly what we have with we, what we have in our hands. Uh, it's a NoSQL database. You don't need to create any tables, any uh, schema. Uh, it's in JSON, so it's a, for, it's a new format uh, from Google, uh, already uh, compatible with JavaScript. It's a near real-time search engine, so it's uh, very useful to analyze logs from a computer, so data which come every second, every minute. So maybe not exactly our case, but maybe in the future when you're going to have uh, electronic samples on your board. Uh, it's very fast. Uh, it's, you have high resiliency and massively distributed. What it means is you distribute the database on many clusters, and they are all interrogated at the same time, which makes it fast. So this is only the database in itself. And you have, already, you have tools or provided with Elasticsearch to do the query on the database. Uh, this is the visualization interface. It's, a, it's very powerful. You have the dashboard. You create dashboards and visualization depending on the data you have on your end. And uh, it's capable to provide any uh, kind of uh, graphs, uh, analytics, I'm going to show you. Uh, and um, we use uh, in the lab Kibi. 
Kibi is the fork of Kibana. It's, uh, it's an English company uh, which tries to implement the relational, the relation between the data, the indexes. So when I say index, uh, think to PubMed is an index, FoodDB is an index. Uh, because the problem now is uh, that Elasticsearch do, does not support the relation between the database. So that's why Kibi is here, it's to, to create these relations. Uh, it's a basic concept, I won't go into details. Uh, you have the resource of public the database, you store it in uh, Elasticsearch search with some data processing, because depending on the source of the data you have in your hand, and you push that in your clusters, and you have multiple indexers which takes care of ingesting your data, put that in the storage, uh, in the indexing, uh, index, uh, index storage, and then you have the uh, Elasticsearch uh, searchers, which are Kibana or Kibi. And this, kind of, this is the kind of visualization you have from the dashboards of Kibi or Kibana. Uh, you have heat maps, map walls, uh, any kind of, um, um, of charts. So it, it's, everything is in JavaScript. Uh, we have some curves, uh, histograms, heat maps, uh, relation graphs. Um, this is the relation graphs here. Uh, you have some metrics, so some just uh, numbers can pop up like that. Uh, world clouds, really useful too. And just very simple tables to, to have your information. Uh, and it's, it's already um, um, adapted to get real-time uh, real -time, real -time, uh, data. So it updates itself. Uh, so it's very cool for um, any monitoring systems. But it can be also uh, um, be uh, adapted to biology. So that's why we are creating currently uh, Kibio.science. Um, it's a web platform just dedicated for life science and to centralize all by well all a lot of bioinformatics data. We, we, we won't be able to all do all, but uh, the most known. And we are currently creating engine for frequent updates to match uh, the latest records. Uh, and it relies on Elasticsearch and TV. I'm creating that with the uh, Regis, a uh, PhD student uh, under the supervision of uh, Arnaud. So the concept is simple. Uh, the goal is gather the main uh, bioinformatics database within Kibio.science and creating all the relations and link them together. Uh, this is just uh, two examples, but currently what we have, we have created a, a program that digests every kind of public database, depending they are in XML, CSV, uh, from the FTP site or any API, but most uh, a lot of uh, bioinformatics uh, repository propose now the JSON directly. So we just take the JSON, we send it to Elasticsearch. We don't have anything to do in that case. Um, so it creates you also Elasticsearch have something very cool. It automatic it has an automatic mapping. You know it, when you. Or, um, usually, when you have a, a, a ORAC database or MySQL database, you need to create a schema of what the what kind of element will go in your database. Elasticsearch does everything alone. So it takes the first data it takes, it generates the kind of, of uh, data it will digest after that. So if you have a string, integers, or whatever, or it, everything is done automatically. Um, the problem is, when you have database like PubMed, you have very real information on it. So that's why we needed to create a dungeon to, uh, uh, to help Elasticsearch do the mapping. So some databases are very use easy to, to push in the Elasticsearch, others are more complex to do. Um, and we have Kibi to do the visualization, uh, search, and all the dashboard we have created uh, with our visualization. In the future, what we want to do, if we have the, uh, the computational resource, is probably to accept user data. Um, so imagine you are, we already have uh, a computer science with all PubMed and uh, FoodDB, Toxin database, and you arrive with your own data in a CSV, for example, from Excel, and we push that, and we do the link with all every, every other database. 
that's what we want to do in the future. Um, and also, I show you the very basic uh, visualization already implemented in Elasticsearch, uh, but we want to create more visualizations such, uh, such as expression heat maps for gene expression, uh, even gene networks, maybe a genome browser or more interactive, uh, but a lot of people are already working on that, so probably won't, uh, won't do anything on it. Um, survival, survival curves, uh, we have a lot of, um, of uh, Collaboration with our search searchers in uh, in clinical uh, in the clinics. So survival survival curves, biostatistics, they are very interesting in that. So we need to implement tools that automatically uh, do some calculation and probably some machine learning. Um, and for that, we won't do <laughs> we won't recreate the wheel. There are a lot of already implemented uh, JavaScript. Um, libraries to do that. Uh, all these kind of um, um, visualization already are, are already implemented in JavaScript. So our goal uh, would be to uh, adapt it to, to Kibi, to Kibana, and Elasticsearch. Um, all this is already known in, uh, in the literature. So I'm going to uh, show you uh, just a, a, short, um, a short video which are not been, uh, have not been implemented in Kibio.science directly, but uh, it's on Campbell. Um, we are working, uh, we have a collaboration with Kibi guys, uh, it's, uh, the, the company is Siren Solution, and um, we have uh, implementing with them Campbell. So let me show you. So you have all your index activities uh, and once you go to the dashboard, you have a few tabs, depending on, uh, uh, and uh, you have already created visualization. And it's automatically updating once you go to tab to tab, because the, the, the database is uh, split in various uh, subsamples. And every time you do a search, it updates everything on your uh, dashboard. So you have automatic filters. Uh, you can also filters by date, or you have syntax uh, already implemented, very easy to use, to, uh, to create filters. And the blue buttons are the relations. So these plugins allows to filter out other subtabs in the other dashboards. And it's, every dashboard are linked together at a certain point. So when you do a, perf a, a, real re a research, you can click on everything on the, <coughs> on, uh, on the dashboard, and if we, if we add the filters in green here, um, to, uh, to filter out, uh, to, um, to, to uh, define your research. And uh, so you have the world cloud, you can click on it. Uh, I'm going to show you on a real, uh, on a, on a real example. So this is the PubMed publication. I want to retrieve here all the, uh, so I have a server. Okay, this server is on Compute Canada West Cloud. Uh, this is something in test two because uh, it can be expensive. Uh, oh, now it's a Java space. Okay, so it can be uh, because it's it's kind of expensive to to uh, to have a, a, a grid server to digest all this data, but still it works. So we are going to use it. Uh, this is a five node server, so we have five, uh, five servers. And uh, this is PubMed. So we have more than 26 million documents. It does not contain the full text, only abstracts. Uh, let me show you the content of, of, uh, of PubMed. Here you have all the fields that PubMed provide us. Uh, for each of one, you have the IDs, you have the articles, and this is all the information that we have in PubMed. Uh, all the authors, mesh headings, PubMed date. It's not very user-friendly to see that like that. So that's why we can create visualization and uh, exploit it in dashboards. So you have here, it's, it's, that's the number of publication by date. So from 1944 to today, 
in 2017, uh, we, we haven't updated science since January, so that's why we don't have a lot of paper from that. And everything is clickable. Yeah, if I click on the date, I have an automatic filter that filter out everything that is made within that year. And uh, the main topics uh, on uh, in that year, uh, in 2000, uh, I don't know, uh, in 1990, uh, all the main topics that have been published uh, to this year. Uh, this is the journal which have been the most, uh, which you, you had the most publication that year. Number of reference, journals. So, and you can go to any world that can you, you are looking for. And everything is updated automatically, and this is all the, the details. So the content of, uh, of PubMed. Oh, I'm going too fast. Um, this is not super nice because it's in construction, but uh, one, day, one day it's going to be uh, nicer. Uh, and you have uh, every, um, every detail for each uh, paper you have uh, in your hand. So you can, of course, do any kind of uh, Search. So, for example, if I'm in Luna, if, I don't know if I have a, uh, I didn't, it didn't entertain on my. Uh, I don't know if I'm looking for uh, a term, a molecule, or whatever. So it's looking within hundred. Uh, it's I think uh, yes. Per med, it's one hundred and fifty gigabytes of data. Okay, and the search does in in few seconds, in two seconds exactly on this server. So it's very fast. And for example, exocrina is in like looking so for I can check for a disease uh, on um, of uh, in the microbiome too. Uh, I don't have a, I checked one yesterday. I don't remember the word. Anyway, um, and each time you create a new search, you can go to the relation you have done uh, with the KB relation. What it does uh, within each um, per med document, I have the, a list of genes, for example, a list of mesh, uh, mesh headings, so medical headings. And if, this, I, if an ID in per med exists in another database, this relation will tell me. So if I go to pub data, for example, I click on it, it goes directly to the pub data, um, dashboard, and it tells me how many entries I have, or how many entry gene I have from the search I just done in PubMed. Um, I also put all the toxin database, oh, um, toxin, toxin 3DB. So if I'm going to toxin database, oh, I clicked on two things on the same time, it didn't like. HM metabolites, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, HMDB metabolites, uh, I think it's, uh, it's 100, uh, it's 80 gigabytes of data, but it shouldn't be flow, uh, slower than uh, per med. Okay, go to a meme. Go to a meme. You have all the disease. Uh, it, you see, just in one view, that's something we don't have in the, when you go to a database. How many entries we have, gene IDs, uh, gene symbol, gene. Every, we can create any kind of matrix we want from the database. Uh, this is a, a mapping on all. Um, on, on the genes in, uh, existing in uh, on the chromosome location and cytolocation from each every genes, uh, including in the database, uh, you have all. Uh, you can you can click on everything. Omim type. Um, it's to, that's the entry type. So you you also need to know what's in the database. I pushed a lot of database in uh, in Elasticsearch without exactly knowing what's happening in it. In each, um, you can search from. You can also click. Uh, we have generating links. Uh, so if you go, want to go directly on the website, so if, if I click on the link, I'm going to go on the website. I won't do it because it's a Mac, and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to come back. Uh, you can search for specific uh, entries. For example, if I want to, uh, to get for that approved gene symbol, I filter out, and boom, I have everything on that gene specifically. Oh, it doesn't have a protein. That's weird. Uh, okay, uh, I will have hope I'm going to have two proteins, so I don't know if I could some things like HSK. I don't have protein. Uh, any kind of gene that could be in, <laughs> in uh, OMIM. 
uh, rest and peel maybe that one okay go for it good we have a protein here so I'm going to HMDB and I take all the well, that's not it's nothing I have the protein itself can be it was very fast and uh, the world cloud provides you uh, every uh, the, meta the metabolite uh, uh, and that interact with that that, uh, that protein. Uh, I can try to come back on good T3DB works. Uh, this is a dashboard I just made yesterday. <coughs> this is all the targets uh, from targets. Uh, oh, I wanted to go to toxins before. Okay, good. Um, category. Okay, good. So this is all the toxins in uh, T3DB. So in four seconds, we have all the content of the database. Uh, you have the toxins per category, synthetic, carbon, pesticide, drugs, uh, by cellular component, uh, by state. You have some metrics we can do. Uh, we can just create like uh, very easily uh, for two to the database. And um, I don't know, if I'm looking for something like uh, vinyl chloride, and uh, I'm doing uh, a filter on it. Um, then I have like a Wikipedia page, like all the description, the search treatment for that uh, specific uh, toxins, uh, mechanism of toxicity, risk level, metabolism, symptoms. When I digested all the content of uh, the toxin data database, everything was already provided uh, with the last, uh, so it was very easy to, to put. And I have the 42 targets for that specific toxin. So if I, if I click on it, it's filtered out automatically on the next, uh, on the next dashboard, and it provides me every, uh, the, all the, 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 the targets from that uh, specific toxin. So all the bio entity, the, and so I don't know exactly what's going on. All the genes are also targeted by that protein. And you can export uh, the, the the table uh, one in, in CSV. So if you want to to to, uh, to do your own calculation on your computer, um, what time is it? Yeah, cool. So this is a uh, this is a uh, computer science right now. Uh, it's going to be up to date uh, probably. In, uh, in the next, uh, the, oh yeah, okay. So um, now in conclusion, I could say that uh, your bioinformatics and metagenomics are, are, are needed for big data tools. Uh, and Elasticsearch may be one of the solution because you see uh, this is the main data, the known database, ORAT, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and this is Elasticsearch. It's currently new and it's going up and up and up, and I don't know what, at what point what it's going to be, uh, but we we hope that technology will continue to um, to be uh, updated and uh, to for the long time. Currently, computer science is that is down, but we hope to have a public version this fall. And if you but. It, you can do it, do it. You can do it yourself. Uh, if uh, you have, if you have at home uh, your own uh, you, a simple computer and you want to digest your all your uh, expression data, uh, you can install Elasticsearch, upload the data even in CSV because tools exist to upload your CSV tables, um, if, uh, and it will be converted in JSON format. And if you uh, if you have uh, some already databases also in JSON, you can push them in Elasticsearch, and it will be easy for you to, uh, to, to explore the data. So this is our lab. Uh, thank you to, uh, to listen to me today, and uh, if you have any question. Uh, question? Uh, for all these documents, uh, yeah, we, currently we have a uh, uh, 40 million documents from the various database. We are just five nodes. Uh, I don't know the power of these nodes, but it's on. Comment ça s'appelle déjà? C'est. Hmm. 
No, uh, it's on the, you, you know, you just create the virtual machine on the fly. And we just created five, and I, we don't know exactly where we are, where they are uh, located. But theoretically, you need to have each VM separately from others to not have the same uh, EIO on the same uh, the hard drive. It should be the, sa the the case, but we are we aren't sure about that. So it should be it should be faster when we can be sure that uh, it will be separated from each other. Yes. I was just wondering if uh, let's say you uh, import use Elasticsearch. Yeah. A bunch of experiments and then you can also upload uh, then you maybe select the subset and then you export it in some ways. Yes. Uh, yes, you can, can use your own some of the analytical solutions that we have, what works there. Yeah. In fact, uh, when I want to discover something, uh, I don't know, like go to uh, to Omim, for example, um, you have uh, all those uh, all those fields here, but you have created before some some search. Oops, the med. I don't want it to do that one. So Omim, and you extract your columns like this, and you want to extract them, for example. Uh, I don't have a plugin yet to do that, but it's on its way uh, from Kibi. So you're gonna have a large table like that, and you just want to, but, and you, you're gonna have to extract that. But seriously, uh, it works by curls, so expose things get, and it just send a JSON as a query, and you retrieve all the document from that in JSON format, and it to, to the conversion is CSV very easy. So you don't, this is just a, a query uh, tool to, to have a visualization, but uh, in the, the back end, with just a JSON query, you have all your documents uh, in your end uh, without, without using that. So you just have to you provide your column names, and you don't know everything you want. No more question. It was too complicated. Uh, just uh, to, and to the create the visualizations, uh, this is just a list of visualization you have. And uh, if I, for example, if I do a tag, a tag cloud from, uh, I did already did those tag uh, free. Okay, no. And when you create the tags. You have the aggregation of terms, and you create. A, uh, you have all your fields here. So, if I go to the chemical list and search for text, and I want to 25, this is how I create a visualization. Boom. I was just thinking that the most useful thing would be like when you lab generate lots and lots of data, and you just wait for the ways to keep it all in one place. Yes. Everybody in the lab. You know? Yes, exactly. So. I don't need to go to give you that side. No, no, you don't need that. It's, it, no, 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 exactly. It's just uh, we just want to try to 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 create to uh, pre-create all these things because, for, for example, PubMed, it's it's crazy. I mean, if you use if you just they get the XMLs and try to send it to to Elasticsearch, it's going to crash very fast because, uh, for example, you have volumes. It's numbers at the first time, so it check one, two, three. So it just this is an integer, and suddenly uh, you have a special issue. You have a letter in it. It's a string. It, it won't like that. So uh, that's why we needed to create uh, an engine to, auto, to to do the mapping ourselves, and uh, we will provide at a certain point the a big JSON of all PubMed. You will download it and you will push it on your Elasticsearch on your lab, and it's done. That's an example. But the work of um, transferring all the known that public database uh, within Elasticsearch in the JSON format, we will do that work. Good? Mm -hmm.